All right, so for today, I am going to really, really, really try to follow the Runtime Fabric and Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, EKS. I have never done this before. I did attend a Runtime Fabric training once, maybe like two years ago or so. So getting started with Runtime Fabric on Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, EKS. Oh gosh, all right. So just so you know, this tutorial was updated in January, 2022. So it was just recently um, updated and it's based on Runtime Fabric version 1.10 release. As I said, there was another version, version 1.9 um, that was different. And that's the one I believe I took the training on. I may be wrong, it was too long ago. So this one is for version 1.10. All right, by the way, this is not a free account. This is not a, an AnyPoint platform free account because otherwise I wouldn't have access to Runtime Fabric. So it's important for you to know that you cannot follow this with a trial account. Um, you will need to have your client or your partner or whoever um, you're working for um, their account that is a paid account. And also the AWS um, console, I don't think you would be able to run it with a free account because we would have to put like EC2 instances up. And I believe that's not included on the free account. So yes, there's that. All right, so let's get started. Then you need AWS CLI. Download the Mac OS B. Yes, okay, download it. Run your downloaded file and follow the on-screen instructions. You can choose to install. Let me follow the on-screen instructions. Cool, reach AWS. Yes, user local being AWS. And then AWS version. AWS CLI, this tutorial requires I use version 2.2.37 and I have 2.2.4.18. So we're cool. Now the kubectl, I just prefer to do it with homebrew. I don't know, it gives me a peace of mind running homebrew instead of running um, curl. kubectl, oh, it was version 1.21 or later, 1.23. 23, yes, so we're cool. And then EKS CTL. Installing or upgrading EKS CTL. Take this, put that. Yes, install the Weave Works Homebrew tab, whatever that is. Again, I'm not gonna pay attention to all of this because my main focus is to do the runtime fabric steps instead of the AWS steps. So I'm just following the thing. Install or upgrade EKS ETL. Uh, okay, install EKS ETL with the following command. Sure. And now let's just verify. Awesome. So EKS ETL, it was supposed to be 067 and we're on 083. So that's great. Okay. AWS configure. And then here is where I write all of my stuff like this. So I'm going to do that on the other screen because you cannot see my credentials. I have that and I can continue doing this thing, I believe, hopefully copy. And then let's do that. Okay. AWS EC2 create KPL region. Oh, we had to change the region, right? Um, US West one. And then let's name this. Actually, let's just leave it like my key pair because I'm lazy. Mm. And then create your cluster nodes with the following command, replace example values with your own. So again, let's copy this and let's put it here. EKS ETL, create cluster name, my mule EKS, sounds good. Version 1.20, sounds good, region, AP Southeast. So we're going to change the region like this. Um, SSH access, SSH public key, my key pair. Yes. Cool. So let me just go into, oh, let me copy this. We're here. Runtime manager, sandbox. 
So I'm here, create runtime fabric. Let's put just RTF demo. Why not? Amazon Elastic Kubernetes server service. We select that, click next. Sure, I accept all of the responsibility and then copy the activation code to your clipboard for use later in this tutorial. So I'm not going to show you that. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to save it somewhere magical. Is this recorded anywhere? You can just go to that channel, click on follow. So you receive notifications every time that I start streaming. You can also download it on your phone. So you receive the notifications on your phone and you will be able to see every time that I come online, it will get a notification telling you, hey, we're online, come hang out. So just go follow us and you can get notifications on your phone all the time so you don't miss a thing. And also all of the previous recordings, all of my previous streams are gonna be there. RTFCTL, a command line tool. Uh, yes, Windows, Mac, here we go. Let me take this curl, put it here. So in my RTF folder, I run that command and now I have my RTFCTL solution right here. Schmod plus plus x rtfctl is that it yes it's a lowercase x all right so this is executable now now <laughs> let me run my command with my activation key that i don't want you all to see so again eks ct ctl create cluster and then the name version region um and my public key Cool, so this is done, yay. So we did that, we have the output. It should say EKS cluster uh, is ready. Yes, EKS cluster uh, is ready. So this took around 15 minutes or so. So just so you consider that. And now we can finally do this. So let's run this. Um, the status is ready, that is that. And this is the output. All right, and then we can finally do this again. So all validation successful, proceed with installation, um, and then waiting for RTF validate namespace to be removed. Now continue to install Runtime Fabric, you will need to replace with the value obtained in the previous step. So again, my activation code comes from here. Once you create the Runtime Fabric, in Runtime Manager, you will be able to see this activation code. And this is the activation code that we're talking about. So it's doing the stuff. And then it says Runtime Fabric is ready, which is what it says here. Now verify the status of the Runtime Fabric installation. And we do have that. We have create managed application deployments, forwarding logs and nodes. They're all healthy. But we have a registered. What if I just continue? Oh, it's active. OK, it just took a while. Yes. Sandbox, whoops, sandbox, apply location. All right, so let me copy this then. I'll make sure to base 44 and 64 encode the license. So I do have my license.lick key, but I have to encode it. So it's just to run this. Let me show you here again. So I have here my license.lick key. All right, so RTF, I'm going to copy this. So once you run the thing, it's going to give you like a huge string that is encoded. And then you just have to do the RTFCTL apply mu license and the whole thing. Whoops. It said update RTF, mu license updated, and that's it. Now creating your controller. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be using an NGX controller. Other options are available. So I did the command. I just copied and pasted whatever was there. And yes, everything created, created, created. All was created. Cool. Just going to copy this, put it here. And then we need to name this ingress template.jaml. I mean, RTF. Yes. And this is going to be ingress template.jaml. Save. Cool. So we have that using the following command, update the path and name where appropriate. Okay, this I need to change, so copy. So kubectl, apply, and then my path, put it here, path, and then 
English template.yaml, right? We do have it there. English template.yaml, yes. Okay, so this is my command, copy, then paste it here. All right, template created. Sweet. All right, inbound traffic. Now deploy mule application. Oh, we're so close to the end. We're so close. Uh, applications, uh, deploy application, unique name. Uh, let's put hello world uh, Martinez. Yes. RTF demo. Notice how now you can select CloudHub or Runtime Fabric, which is cool. I had never done that before. Well, yes, in a training, but it was so long ago. Now import file, example, hello world, hello world. Select that, select. Oh, it's just the one that I already have, right? I don't have to do anything else, yep. And then click deploy. So it's just so you notice like here on Ingress, uh, you're deploying to rtfexample.com and then hello world and Martinez. Deploy. And then get external IP address on, G on the Nginx, Nginx server. Run, run. Cool. Um, so what did I have to get? Oh, this thing. So yeah, the external IP from the Nginx controller, the load balancer. So let me do that, but I'm gonna copy this, put it here. Okay, and it gave me two IPs. Um, and we're sending, this is the example, but I'm gonna replace this with my own. So if I go back here, I take this, copy, go back, remove. Let me just see what I'm pasting. Yeah, okay. So I just need this, put it here. So resolve rtf example.com. And then here is where I need to put the IP address of the ingress controller. So whatever I got back from my other call. Yeah, I missed a hello world. Hello world and Martinez slash hello world. Yes. All right, so copy that. So this is a command curl. And then this is the URL that we got from any point platform, this one. Remember that this has HTTPS and then HTTP. So you just need to remove the HTTPS. So we end up with HTTP, rtfexample.com, hello world, and Martinez, hello world. You remember to add the slash hello world and then do the dash dash resolve and then rtfexample.com. Cool. And then this is the uh, port 80, and this is the IP that I got from the previous command, which was this command. Cool. So I run that. Oh, I added a D by mistake. OK. And I get the hello world. So this is connecting to my application. And that's it. Yay, we made it. All right, so next steps. In this tutorial, we talked you through deploying a Hello World Mule app to Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, EKS, cluster running Runtime Fabric, using Runtime Fabric. You learn how to create an Elastic Kubernetes Service using the Airbnb SLI. You learn how to use kubectl to create an Ingress controller, and you learn how to install Runtime Fabric using RTFCTL. You also deployed and tested a simple Hello World Mule app running on your new cluster. We did all that. Yes, uh, I feel so good. <laughs> and then if you want to continue, you can click on the next button and go to the configure TLS and last mile security. So if you want to take it to the next level and implement HTTPS or TLS security, um, you can continue with this other tutorial. I'm not going to go there. Um, so yes, we did it. We did it. We finally did it. I'm going to put together the highlights from the last um, stream, which were like installing all of the CLIs tools. And 
together with this live stream where we finally got to do all of this and i'm gonna remove all of my mistakes and all of my like the 15 minutes that it took to run in aws so you can get like a clearer picture of how to install all of the prerequisites and how to actually follow this tutorial as it should so we're gonna do that i'm gonna do that i'm gonna edit the two videos and i'm gonna upload them to youtube as one and you're gonna see in our channels again here's oh sorry here is our mulesoft community linkedin and our twitter which is MuleDev. so you're gonna get the updates there and i can also put that video here though in the top uh, because we don't have a video right now i can put here the video of me going through all of these things see you all on a next stream bye